Hey folks, Tom Norfleet with www.citizenshipquickly.com. Wanted to talk to you about Dubai real estate today. Um, I'm going to give you the three areas that I think are the best deals right now. Uh, and as of right now, we're, we're looking at the date because some people are concerned with that when this video came out. Uh, today is November the 28th, 2019, which is Thanksgiving. Um, Dubai property has uh, been pretty much uh, plummeted. Uh, in fact, it's probably one of the worst real estate markets they've had in years. Uh, Mark Mobius, one of the top fund managers, uh, used to be with Templeton. Now he has his own fund group. He also owns property there in Dubai. He says the bottom and out is nowhere close to the bottom several years down the road before he even hits near bottom. The guy who was the head of uh, Dimac Properties, who's the developer, and usually you don't hear anything negative from developers in the last year, said that we've got several years left before the bottom and out occurs. If you get a chance, just drive around Dubai and you'll look at all the skeletons that are around there. Those buildings are going to have to get filled up and you're going to see a lot of bankruptcies before that bottom hits. Realtors will tell you anything. They'll always sound positive because they want you to buy all the time. Trust me, right now is nowhere close to the bottom. I would be waiting. If you're going to buy, if you absolutely have to buy, you need to throw in figures at 50% off the asking price. And I'm going to tell you how you can tell what is the correct asking price. First of all, don't go to a realtor, any particular realtor that's referred to you when you're shopping in Dubai. I'm going to tell you the best way to do it is to check two websites. One is propertyfinder.com and the other one is Dubizzle, D-U-B-I-Z-Z-L-E. If you look at these two websites, they will show you the cheapest properties in Dubai. There's no really multiple listing service in Dubai. And realtors will tell you they'll take you around the, to other people's listings, but they won't. Okay. The only way you can do it is to, to do it yourself. Go on these two websites. I like propertyfinder.com better. It's just easier to, to sift through. And then pick the areas that you like the best and then go through and then uh, look at the cheapest ones in that area. And then bottom fish on those. Make offers way, way under those prices. I'm going to tell you the three areas, in my opinion, that are the cheapest, because if, let me just tell you, if you want value, investment, rate of return, this is what I'm giving you. Now, if you're wanting big units, more comfortable units, oceanfront units, that's a different story. I'm telling you the units that are easier to sell are the cheaper units because more people can afford them, okay? And right now, I will tell you at the present time the cheapest units and what the prices are. Areas, let's say, for instance, like Jumeirah Village, uh, triangle, you can get units as low as 70,000 US. I'm going to give you all this in US dollars. The cheapest one's around 70,000. You could probably throw in offers under that and maybe pick them up at, uh, you know, uh, even 50 or 40, okay, if you're patient enough and you wait because the market it hasn't bottomed out. It's going to continue dropping, okay? So uh, don't be so rushed to go in and buy. Uh, in fact, in my opinion, I would not buy, which I'm going to tell you here in, in, in a minute, a few reasons why. Uh, IPMZ is another one. You can buy units. These are studio units that I'm telling you, too. These are not, uh, and you can probably pick up one-bedroom units for about the same thing. One bedroom, one bath, or one bedroom, two baths. Uh, IPMZ is around 70000 uh, Dubai Sports City, you can pick them as uh, pick them up as low as eighty thousand or under. Maybe you even pick them up at uh, sixty five or seventy thousand U S dollars. Okay. Now I've left out. Some people wonder, you know, why did you leave out the studio units in uh, Dubai Marina, which is probably the most popular area in Dubai. Uh, more people are more interested in more searches on Dubai Marina than any other place. Let me tell you the problem I've got with Dubai Marina. I like it as far as the area, I like it the best. The other three areas I told you are in the business district. I left that international city because that place is kind of a dive down there. You, you need to buy cheap areas, but near the business districts. I would not go with international city. It's very messy down there. And Dubai is really a pretty neat city as far as cleanliness, but not in, in that area. And I would stay away from that area. Uh, so if you pick the three areas that I told you about uh, are good. If you want to go by, by into Dubai Marina, that's fine. But let me tell you some problems that you won't see. If you don't believe me, do Google searching on black mold in Dubai Marina. It's just all over the place. I rented out two units in Dubai Marina. Both of them had black mold. And what the landlords do is they'll paint over it. But then, then it'll come out 
I had one unit, it, it started coming out two weeks after I moved in. And black mold can be toxic. And the material that you bring in or the spray stuff that the mold um, uh, killers have to use is very toxic stuff. And you literally have to be away from your apartment for days. Don't get an apartment or buy an apartment uh, in Dubai, uh, especially in Dubai Marina. I wouldn't even touch units in Dubai Marina because of the mold. Okay, but if you're going to do it, you better make sure that, and they show you it proof that they've had uh, the air ducts cleaned out at least in the last two years. And then you need an inspection every single year. And that only gets rid of it. It's still going to come back because Dubai Marina is right next to the ocean. And this is the problem that you have there with uh, mold. It's rampant. If you don't believe me, do Google searches. None of the realtors will tell you about it. You're going to move in, buy the unit, and then you're going to find out about this crap. It gets in your clothes. It's everywhere. And it's a mess. I had cabinet slime building up in the cabinets. In fact, I actually took a case with Rara against a landlord on it. I mean, this is, it was a nightmare. Uh, trust me, if you're going to buy out there, expect black, black mold, okay? And you're going to have to be on top of it constantly. These other areas are not as close to the ocean, so you don't have problems with the black mold like you do in Dubai Marina. So you need to consider that. Um, I would uh, wait, though, to buy, and personally, I wouldn't buy there myself at all. And I'll tell you why. Uh, there's some things that I don't like about Dubai Marina, uh, Dubai, period, okay? Uh, and that is the, uh, uh, if you're single, like I am, if you're uh, going to um, go there as a single person, just be a celibate, okay? If you can't deal with that, don't go to the UAE, especially, uh, or any of the Emirates, but Sharjah is even especially strict. Uh, and if you go there and you stay in a hotel, most of the hotels will ask you if you bring a, a girl there, is she your wife? And if she's not, you're going to have to have separate hotel rooms. And if you, they don't ask you and you still go in the hotel room with a girl that's not your wife, that doesn't excuse you. They can send you to, to, to jail for that. And it happens a lot. I just talked to a girl who just uh, in the Philippines, I'm in the Philippines right now, matter of fact, uh, and I, I was talking to her in a hospital and she told me that she just got out of a Dubai prison. She and her boyfriend, who's an Emirati national, both went to prison because they were not married and they were accused of having sex outside of marriage. So if you can't deal with that, I'm not telling you it's right or wrong. I'm just telling you, if you can't deal with it, then don't go there, okay? It, because you're going to have an issue with that, that, that problem. Uh, and uh, especially don't buy real estate because uh, Dubai has very strict laws and they can confiscate assets. They can throw you in prison for things that you don't think you should be going to prison for. Uh, and they do have flogging. Now, how often they use it, what they use it for, I don't know, but they do have flogging. And Singapore also has that too. So these are things that you need to think about. Uh, so, you know, uh, buying real estate there is a, a big move. And remember, getting citizenship there is almost impossible. So, uh, you know, if you go there, most people go there and they leave. And also, you're going to have problems with uh, renters because renters, remember, 80, 90 percent of the people that live in Dubai are expats. So they're not going to be there probably until they retire. A lot of people go in there for a couple of years and they're gone. And they can tear your apartment up and leave the country and you got no recourse because they're out of the country. They've gone and your apartment can be a mess. And this is what you got to be concerned about if you're an owner because you're going to deal with a lot of people from different cultures because they're from all over the world. You got people from Bangladesh, India, you got people from uh, Pakistan, uh, a lot of Europeans. Um, but most of the people that come there are either from the Philippines, Bangladesh, uh, Indians, or from Pakistan. And the cultures could be different than if you're from the West and you're buying and then you're trying to rent the place out. In fact, most of the time when you rent there, uh, the landlord will ask you what country you're from because they have had uh, bad situations from people from certain countries with cultures, cultural differences. So you, these, these are some real headache problems that you've got. There are some positives in buying real estate there. There is no property tax. There's a, um, a stamp duty of any, runs anywhere from 1% to 7%. There's a transfer tax of 4%. And then you got to pay a real estate commission of 2%. But remember, you got to add all that crap up. So if you resell in a couple of years, you could very easily lose your ass. 
So you need to think about that when you're buying in a place that has a lot of fees like that. A lot of cases, I like a capital gains tax better than I do a stamp duty because uh, if the property doesn't go up, you don't pay anything when you sell it. Stamp duty, you got to pay whether it's up or down. So if you lose on the sale of the property, you still have to pay the stamp duty. These are issues that you need to think about. So these are uh, reasons that I've looked at that, um, uh, you know, that you really need to think about when you're, you're, you're buying in a place like that. Uh, so anyway, if you've got a question or a comment, uh, if you'll put it in the comment section below. Also, we deal with uh, citizenship by investment. If you're looking for uh, um, uh, to get a passport fast, as quick as two to four months, we can help you out on that. And we also deal with um, uh, properties that qualify for citizenship. Uh, so if you're needing that, just let us know and be glad to help you out. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to the right of your video or to the right of your screen there. And we'll get new uh, videos to you as soon as they come in. Look forward to talking to you. Uh, on our next video. Take care. Bye.